Hello, welcome to this series of videos on the definite integral. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help lead you through this calculus journey. Let's get started. What is the definite integral? What do the symbols mean? How do you find it by the definition? And how do you find a short, shorter way to do it? Let's get started. So we have a set of symbols here. We have to break down exactly what each piece means and how you find it. So what this represents, first off, is the exact area under the graph of f of x above the x-axis between x equals a and x equals b. The integral symbol was introduced by Leibniz, and so we'll call that the integral sign. Okay, it has a partner that goes along with it. Never write the integral sign without the partner, which is dx or d, whatever variable that you're using. Okay. Inside the integral, we have a function. That's our function f of x. The name of that is the integrand. A and b are the limits of integration, with a being the upper limit, a lower limit, and b being the upper limit. The dx just indicates which variable that you're integrating with respect to. They're partners, though. Never have the integral symbol without the dx symbol. Okay. And so, uh, that, that says the same thing I just said. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, wonderful. All right. And so the procedure of calculating this number for the area is integration. The second half of calculus deals with this skill, being able to integrate and use it in applications. So let's talk about the definition from the beginning. Like what does each piece mean? How do you find it? How do you estimate it? And how do you get it exactly? All right. So um, the function needs to be defined between a and b. The function needs to be continuous um, between a and b. Um, if it's not continuous, it needs to at least be made up of uh, pieces that, you know, a, a finite number of pieces that are continuous. Um, and here's what we do. We, we divide that, in, that interval from a to b up, okay? Um, we divide it up into subintervals of equal width. And so, we have uh, a we have uh, a to b, and we're going to divide it into n subintervals. So each interval then would be the total distance b minus a divided by n. This 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 width is called delta x. Okay. Now with that we have um, subintervals now n of them. Okay, and so we have to name these places where we make these marks. Here's a num number line. It's going to help us out. So A is on the left, B is on the right. The, the, the first um, evaluation point after A is A plus 1 delta X. So if, if delta X is 3, it'll be like, and if A is 7, the, uh, you start with a 7, the next one would be a 10. One copy of delta X. The next one is two copies of delta X. So you have a 7, have a 10. Next one's going to be two copies of three so six seven plus six would be 13 7 10 13 and so this is a systematic way to write out what each of the different subdivisions um sub intervals are okay and what we call this is uh the first one a is going to be called x sub zero or sometimes read x naught and then we'll have uh the first one being x1 and x2 and x3 and you're going to end at x n though there'll, there'll be n of them and what we want to focus our attention on is someplace generically in the middle. Call it I. Okay. That, the, um, that part of the interval, that, that right-hand part of that subinterval, the I subinterval, is found by taking A and adding I copies of delta X. Okay. So X1 is one copy of delta X. X2 is two copies of delta X added to A. X3 is three copies of delta X added to A. So XI is I copies of delta X added to a all right great so then what you do is you have to figure out well, where you're going to evaluate the height so we're making rectangles okay and uh trying to find the area of these rectangles two dimensions define the area of a rectangle the width which we know as delta x and then the height and so the, to get the height what we do is we pick a place in each of the intervals and we evaluate the function at that place. So what we call this place generically is x i star. So x1 star, 
x2 star, x3 star, and we'll end at xn star. Or we could start at zero and end at xn minus one. But anyway, um, sometimes it's, you know, defined for you. So, you know, left end point, using the left end point, using the right end point, using the midpoint. Generically, though, we'll just say someplace. xi star is, we're going to go and evaluate the function, and that's going to give you the height of the rectangle. Okay. All right, great. So we get the exact area by summing the area of these rectangles. There's n of them. And we want the number of them to go to infinity. This is calculus. So what do we do when things go to infinity? We do a limit. So the definite integral of f of x from a to b is de defined. The definition is this right here. The limit as n goes to infinity on the sum, we're adding up. OK, so there's a summation sign there. And i is going to go from 1 to n. There's the height, which is f of xi star, and there's the width, which is delta x. That's the definition of the definite integral. And now, we had the definition of the derivative, and we did many problems with trying to find the derivative with the definition. When it comes to the integral, we'll do only one major example of, of finding it, uh, finding the value with the definition. We, we, we'll see how bad it is and we'll realize that we must have a better way. This is way too much work to do it by definition. And so um, that's where we're headed. And so, um, of course, this is all provided that the, that the limit exists. Um, you'll need some tools along the way. OK, now in this video, just giving you these tools, um, if you're going to do it from the definition, uh, the name of this is called a Riemann sum, Riemann mathematician and so the sum is named after him and so to evaluate this Riemann sum we're going to need some preliminary results okay about finite sums okay so c is a constant n is a positive integer the first sum we need is to add up basically n copies of one now that can be any constant n copies of any constant but the sum of a constant i equals one to n is saying you have n of them and you're just adding them up. So you'll have n times the constant. If the constant is 1, it's just n times 1. If the constant is 7, you have n copies of 7. So the sum is 7 times n. That's the first um, sort of a preliminary result that we need. Next, we'll move to adding up. Instead of adding up a bunch of 1s or a bunch of constants, next we'll let it change on the inside. So add 1 plus 2, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's the same thing I was just saying, uh, constants, so n times the constant. Next we'll move to adding up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and then stopping someplace at n. If we were to stop at 10, then we'd add up the numbers from 1 to 10. Okay, the answer would be 55. Okay, and the way you can get that so quickly is with the formula. The formula is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And we'll be using these formulas if ever we see sum i equals 1 to n on i. Okay, so it's um, adding up 1 to n, and that's the formula for that. n times n plus 1, all divided by 2. All right, just a couple more formulas will be done. Um, I, uh, I squared, the sum of the i squares, the sum of the squares. So 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 up to n squared. Okay, there's a formula for that. And so it's n times n plus 1. It's, it's cubic. So the third term is 2n plus 1. And that's all divided by 6. OK. And if for some reason you have the sum of the cubes, well, here's the formula for that. It looks a lot like the sum of the i's, but um, it's the whole quantity squared. All right. So that's all the tools that you'll need. On the next video, we'll dive in. We'll do a Riemann sum from the definition. We'll do a couple finite sums to get our feet wet. And then we'll jump in and do from the definition. We'll do a we'll do a Riemann sum. We'll quickly realize that this is not the way to go. We want to find some kind of better way to do it. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this calculus journey. You can do it. Don't give up. Um, comment down below. Like and subscribe. Uh, reach out to me if you need anything. Um, my website is calccoach.com, and I'll be happy to get you the resources that you need. Thanks. See you in the next video.